Yo, Sanjay Uchiha here. People bringing you my review on Samurai Jack Season 5. Oh, someone messaging me. <sighs> episode 10. Like, the final episode of the entire series. Ah, <sighs> man, was this one a roller coaster, people? Like, I've. I have like mixed feelings on this final episode and like after 16 years it's finally over wow it's crazy but let's get into it um honestly i think this episode might have been the weakest out of all the episodes of season five um <sighs> Man, man, it's just, it's just crazy. I mean, of course, all right, let's just get right into it. So the episode starts off, you see majority of the people Jack has held from the previous seasons yeah, to watch a live broadcast um, from Aku's lair, of course, and <laughs> we're greeted. I mean, this was obviously intentional from the, um, the writers and creators, whatever. We get um the old intro, you know, long ago. <laughs> a foolish samurai warrior. You know, that, that same intro from seasons one to four, really and truly. And it was really hitting me in the nostalgia, like the feels, man, like ah, looking back, we've come so far with the show. But of course, um by the end of that little intro, Aku <laughs> just comes in and is like, not but yeah, we get a lot of comedy throughout the first part of this episode, honestly. Um, as we really see that all the people Jack helped realize that Jack's now in captivity. And <laughs> we have this typical case of the villain just running his mouth off and not finishing the hero. But luckily for this series, now, cool, it's actually in his character to do shit like that. So I didn't find that too much of a problem. Because after this point, we're actually seeing Aku has the opportunity to finish off Jack. But he can't decide, like, what? <laughs> How to finish him off in terms of the weapon. So that was kind of funny. Um, through the episode, Jack tried to get back through to Ashi, trying to recover her. But as we eventually see, when she's about to finish him off Jack, um, somehow, I don't know how they managed to get there so quickly, but Jack's friends... The same people who are watching the broadcast managed to like storm the fortress and it was crazy we get this all-out battle between jack's friends and aku's forces and aku himself which was pretty interesting to see it was just you could feel the like the tension and all of that but and it was cool jack seeing that all his friends are here to help him so meanwhile they're battling aku and these little um mini akus because um aku transfers some of the resistance into <laughs> mi um, mini versions of himself so meanwhile all this is going on jack is fi fighting ashi and he's trying to get through to her um eventually aku starts to overwhelm them and the scotsman rolls in because i was wondering when he'd roll in and of course he's a major help in actually stalling time for jack to get through to ashi um the episode does eventually lead to Ashi regaining control, opening a portal to the past, Jack finally getting back to the past and destroying Aku in the past. Um, eventually, they were set to get married, but because Jack killed uh, Aku in the past, Ashi ceases to exist. And we eventually see Jack wander off into a forest. We see him see a ladybug. And it kind of reminds him of Ashi, and then we basically end the episode there. <sighs> I guess recap slash synopsis over. Honestly, as I said before, this episode left me with mis mixed feelings. I think the pacing was like one of the biggest downfalls of this episode, honestly. It felt, at a lot of points throughout the episode, it actually felt as if they were trying to stuff a lot of stuff into the 20 minute start 22 minute episode really and truly 
I I was hoping it would have been like an hour long finale or multi part or something like that. But this episode was definitely rushed for the finale. Like like I'm glad that it's over, but I just I just didn't feel completely satisfied by the end. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this review and you watch the episode, you know what I mean. It just like it was a bittersweet ending, and I like. Even though I wanted Jack and Archie to end up together, the bittersweet ending has its merits, I suppose, because even in victory, he still had to make a, um, make a major sacrifice, so that was kind of cool from a writing standpoint. But the pacing of this episode was... Ugh. And I must say, the way that Jack got through to Archie so Archie could recover, um, it was... It was cliche, honestly, <laughs> because... Jack basically told Ashi that you no, know, when she was at one point, Ashi basically, I guess, oh, sure, for lack of better, <laughs> better term, I guess, swallows Jack whole. Like the black, that cool part of her just kind of just absorbs Jack, and Jack is going through her being, and she, he finally bumps up into her and tries to convince her to do the fight, don't give up, try to regain control. And it's Jack telling her that he loves her, that makes her come back. I found that to be pretty cliche, honestly. Like, eh. But I guess within the context of the story, I guess it does make sense, but it's a cliche, honestly. Um, and then, like, I've been seeing throughout the computer that people have been complaining how Ashi just instantly knew how to use Aku's powers, but I think, uh, I guess. An excuse for that, she has been, I guess, I, how should I even put it? <laughs> I am guess she would retain the memories of when Aku's influence was um in control, so yeah, but it's kind of kind of still kind of sketchy. Or she even knew how to open a time portal that was eh. And don't get me started on the time travel stuff in this episode, like, I mean, I mean, granted, obviously, it's kind of a 50-50 thing. Hence my mixed feelings on this. Granted, the mission has always been to get back to the past, beat a cool, but by that logic, obviously this all the experiences that Jack went through would have been erased, all those relationships, all those people kinda of wiped from existence or not necessarily wipes if you think about it, because let's see, Jack's a cool sends Jack to the future and these people that Jack interacted with over the um, time in the future, they were all from different planets mostly. So it's not necessarily that they were erased, but it's just their relationships with Jack were erased essentially. So it's kind of like seasons one to five, <laughs> the entire show was mute. But I, I guess people should, should have expected that because that's been the plan all along. I mean, granted, it would have been cool to see him stay in the future and kind of just try to build from there and probably it would be cool if he even found a message from his people like during that time and it kind of encouraged him to say all right just build what you have from um cut your losses stay in the future that would have been cool but since i think the show was just trying to stay true to what it's been building up all these five seasons that jack needs to get back to pass destroy a coup and it was kind of weird, this, like the time travel thing, because Jack kills Aku in the past, and by extension, Aku would have never visited the High Priestess, she would have gotten pregnant, and thus Ashi ceases to exist. But if Ashi ceases to exist, Jack wouldn't be able to get back to the past, so, eh, like, the mechanics of the time travel could have been, it should have been handled better. So I think that does take away from the episode as well, uh, honestly. And it was, even though I know Ashi just suddenly sprang the time travel thing, it, like, I wanted to see Jack interact with all his friends more. That, I think that was, like, they were dying towards the end, and... Uh, I think it really just comes down to the time that was given for the finale, honestly. I don't know if it's a fault of the writers or if just on paper, on contract, that's the amount of time they were given, really. 
honestly, I realized that the previous seasons were like, what, 14 episodes, 13? I think this season needed some extra episodes. And I've been seeing people complain about The Guardian. Um, it was Whose Glasses Was Seen in episode 9. Yeah, there was a plot point in previous seasons about Future Jack, which does not tie in. And with this ending, it doesn't tie in completely with what was seen. So it's kind of like a retcon. So uh, this episode was just all over the place. So honestly, I'm glad that it's over. I'm glad Jack is back. And one more thing, it was weird. His parents were young again. Where, as opposed to in episode one, they were old. So I don't know. Other things just felt rushed with this episode. Honestly, I'm not satisfied with the ending, but I'm glad it's over. It's it's an okay ending, I suppose. But eh. but if you watch the episode, let me know what you think. Probably can start a discussion in the comment section. Rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one, people.